The number one question I get asked when it comes to vocals is do I false chord or do I fry scream? I'll try to give you some insight on that. So it's no secret that I do a lot of vocal lessons, um, advertising them on my page all the time. I tend to do them almost every tour we do. And the number one question students ask is false chord or fry screams? And my answer seems to disappoint them a lot. I say neither. And I know that sounds weird because I obviously use fry for some of my high screams and all that. But when it comes to lows, I don't feel like I use either. And to be completely honest, I didn't even know what a fry scream or a false chord scream was until I started giving lessons to other people. I never really looked on YouTube for vocal advice or anything. I kind of just did what most naturally came to me. I think that's what everyone needs to do. To box screams into two different styles just kind of seems counterproductive to me. Screaming as a whole is kind of a new thing vocally that's been going around. I can't imagine screaming music's been around for more than, what, 30, 40 years? And in the form it is now, probably 15, 20 years. So for us to think that we've got it narrowed down to two types of screams just seems a little too quick to judge. So my answer when it comes to false chords versus fry screams, answer is do what comes naturally to you. Do what feels good for your voice. Everybody has a different throat. What may work for you may not work for me and vice versa. Like if I try to go out and scream like Josh Scoggin, I'm gonna blow my throat out. I've met vocalists who cannot do lows or gutturals, but I cannot do the screams they're doing. It's because we're all unique and individual and I think we just need to embrace that as vocalists. You're never going to be as good as the band or the artist you're trying to be like. And I firmly believe that. And it's perfectly fine to take influence from vocalists and all that, but I think you need to embrace what you have. I could only do high screams, like the first six years of screaming, and eventually the low screams started to develop. Before, when I tried doing lows, it sounded like a frog. It sounded disgusting because I wanted to sound like Tim Lambesis. I wanted to sound like Jeremy McKinnon. And I was like damaging my throat trying to do those things. I would lose my voice all the time. I struggled to get through shows. And I really started to see drastic improvement when I embraced like, hey, right now all I can do is high screams. I'm gonna try to do the best high scream I can possibly do. And that's when I really started to see improvement. So I challenge you whether your one scream that you are good at is a mid, a low, or a high, embrace it, make it as awesome as you can, and then work on expanding it. Because once your throat is strengthened up, you can start expanding on stuff. Like that's why I started singing like two or three years ago. My throat wasn't ready to do singing and screaming but now I'm feeling comfortable whether it's live or in the studio and I feel like I can really do it and I attribute a lot of that to embracing what I had when I was 19 which I'm 27 now it just took a lot of practicing strengthening up my voice and it really has made a huge difference so um, if this video helped give a like if it is stupid and you don't like it dislike it comment below if you have any more questions if you'd like me to touch on in any other videos uh, thanks for watching have a great day